I would say um, it's definitely uh, met our expectations and then more. You know, we were looking for the opportunity to retire early, um, and part of that was just to kind of slow life down a little bit, uh, get out of the, the, the hurry up and go, um, and this place absolutely uh, is perfect for that. Um, so it's been very relaxing, um, and th that's really what we were looking for, was just, just kind of slow down and enjoy life. Uh, and this, you know, we found that Las Tablas is a place where you can absolutely do that. So my name's Wally. Uh, this is my esposa, Sam. Uh, and we are from the Seattle, Washington area in the United States. We actually met online um, on OkCupid and then went out at a, on like a girls night, guys night, and uh, the rest is history. We met about eight years ago, and then uh, we've been married uh, since 2017. We moved this uh, past July, about the middle of July. We spent a few days in Panama City and went to the embassy there to like notarize our driver's licenses. Went to Coronado for a few days and then we had an Airbnb reserved for about a month on Playa Uvarito. Well, we were very excited uh, to get back to Panama. We actually did the Panama relocation tour in March of this year. Um, so only a few months before we actually moved. So um, after spending the, you know, the, the week long, uh, you know, exploring the country with the tour group, uh, we were extremely excited to get back. And uh, the weather is amazing. Um, you know, it's the tropics. so. You know, you're expecting that, that nice, warm, kind of a little bit humid, um, but you acclimate to it pretty quickly and you get used to it. Um, but we were super stoked as soon as we got here and uh, it's been a really good experience for us thus far. It's kind of like we're always on vacation. <laughs> Getting yeah. used to being retired, but it just feels like an awesome vacation. We've always loved the beach and going somewhere warm. So it's about 75 to 85 all the time. And, um, it's pretty nice. So we currently live in a small project that's just outside of Las Tablas. It's actually closer to the town of uh, Tablas Abajo. Um, so it's only about five minute drive into the, into the center of, of Las Tablas. Uh, we, we started, as, as uh, Sam mentioned, we started at Uber, Playa Uberito uh, for a few weeks and then we found a long-term rental here in Las Tablas. Our neighborhood is pretty quiet. Um, it's a small project of three homes and there's several other projects around us. Um, but for, for the most part, we're on a private, um, probably the equivalent of a cul-de-sac because uh, it, it does not, it's, there's no through traffic, it's only the, the residents. So, um, so far we really love the house, uh, we love the location. Uh, it's close to numerous beaches for my fishing fetish. Um, so I can pretty much choose which one I want to go to each morning and, and it's only uh, inside of about 15 minutes to each one. So, I think that we have like two favorite fondas that we like the best here. I like how everything is um, close together, yet we feel a little bit secluded or you know almost out in the country. But so it's pretty quiet. Um, but we're close to everything major that we would need. There's a hospital. Uh, we're kind of centrally located in between Petasi and Chitre. Uh, so there's a golf course for him. There's the beaches that we mentioned. And I have a gym like to run or walk and it's safe. The Fondas are our favorite. We like Amelis. And then I don't actually know the, n the name of the one, but it's close on this like street that we live on. And um, they always have really good food and it's like three dollars and fifty cents it's pretty amazing and for the for the most part the, the entire time that we've, we've lived in this area and all the panamanians we've interacted with are so nice they're so friendly um, they're welcoming um, 
Yeah, there's a lot of culture here, a lot of parades, a lot, a lot of stuff. If you want to go out and you want to experience the Panamanian culture, uh, it's, it's alive and well here, and you can absolutely go and do that. Um, also, you know, the expat community here is actually larger than we thought it was going to be, um, but it's not so much that you're, you're only interacting with expats. So yeah. we like it. It's kind of a healthy balance uh, where we, we get to experience the Panamanians as well as uh, uh, the expats if we wish. So our rent for the long-term rental that we're in currently, um, it's a little bit higher than what we wanted when we first came here. Um, but once we saw the house and we saw what the house came with, um, the fact that it has its own pool um, and the services that were provided as part of the rent, um, it was just a good fit for us. Um, so our, our rent is $1,000 a month uh, for the house. It's a three bedroom, two bath. Um, the uh, utilities, um, like most places in the hotter areas of Panama, um, the electricity is, is it's as much as you use the air conditioning because uh, that's the, the, the highest generation of, of, or usage I should say, of electricity. So our, our electric bill, what we figured out on average is about 220 a month and that's pretty much running an air conditioner most of the day. Um, and then uh, our Wi-Fi is the only other thing that we have to pay for uh, that our landlord doesn't take care of. And for this location, we have fiber, uh, which is nice, so very reliable and, and decent speeds of, of our internet, and that's $32 a month. Um, so in terms of the house itself, it's about you know $1,500 total for you know the house and utilities. And then our entire monthly budget, what we found over the last three months of kind of averaging it out, it's about $2,200 to $2,300 a month is what we, uh, uh, we live off of. My favorite dish will be different than hers. I really like the uh, the pollo uh, and echiote. Uh, very good. Every place I've had it, it's just been amazing. The chicken falls off the bone and it's got a lot of really good flavor. I like this bistec and cinta and cebolado. It's like steak and onions and the place close by to our home really makes it good. Um, and they flavor the steak and it's really good. The rice with whatever kind of beans or lentils, you know, we watch like everybody else does and we pour the beans on top of our rice and <laughs> then there's usually some sort of coleslaw or salad, if you will, um, which has always been excellent. So there's good water at the two places that we go to and then um, occasionally I've gotten the limonada, um, which is absolutely delicious. We have a little bit of a different routine. Yeah. He different. is an early riser, so he wakes up first. Yeah, so I, I usually get up around 6 a.m. Um, We're retired, I don't if, know why he uh, gets up that early. Well, it's usually either I can see the sunlight a little bit coming through the window or I hear the roosters reminding me it's time to get up. Um, Which aren't too bad, no, fortunately. Too bad. So I usually get up around 6 a.m. Um, my goal is usually, so twice, two to three days a week, I'm sorry. Um, I try to go golfing, uh, so the group that I golf with generally likes to tee off around 7.30, so we usually leave if we're, we're going to carpool or even driving myself um, around 6.30 to head up to Chitre uh, to meet them, and then uh, we usually golf in the morning, and then um, I'm either home by about midday or we'll you know, stay up there and have lunch, and then I'll be home a little bit after. Uh, on the days that I don't golf, um, I usually try to go fishing. <laughs> Um, in my kayak, so I'll usually have the kayak loaded from the night before and try to uh, leave the house around 545 to whichever beach I'm going to go to. I might have to leave a little bit early, but my goal is usually to get out there between 6 and 615 so I can get on the water and, and uh, hopefully catch some fish. Um, but yeah, that's kind of my day. That, that's, I would say that's five of the, of the days of the week. Um, when I get home from those uh, hobbies, usually um, if Sam's still here, we'll go to lunch at a Fonda or something and then come back and we'll take a dip in the pool to cool off. And Daily then, dip. Yep. And then we just kind of relax in the afternoon and evenings and cook dinner. And uh, we, like, we like our TV, so we like to watch our shows and uh, watch movies and stuff. So we'll usually do that in the evening once it gets dark. Yeah. 
I'll either sleep in to what's natural, you know, eight or nine, or maybe 10 or 11. <laughs> I'm retired, so um, I do like to sleep in. I don't sleep as well at night, so um, it takes me longer to fall asleep. But, so I'll sleep in, and I'll either get up and go to the gym if he's left the car, or I could take a taxi. Um, I would just call one up and then um, walk or run at the gym, and then go to a Fonda, maybe hit up a grocery store. But we like to do a lot of that together as well. So sometimes he'll come home, we'll go to the Fonda, and then we'll go out on a few errands or whatever. Uh, we like to get stuff fresh so that, you know, it's enjoyable and it doesn't go bad. So the, the cell phone service, we both have Tigo, um, and that was a choice just kind of on the online forums, um, hearing other people talk about their uh, experiences with the different coverages, with the different carriers. Um, we do have some friends that uh, they actually split, where one person has one carrier, another person has another, um, and they do seem to have service in areas that we sometimes don't, but for the most part, we've only had a couple instances um, since we've been, been here where we didn't have any service with Tigo. Um, and the nice thing about the Tigo plan is, you know, it's unlimited talk, text, and data, all for $27 a month. Yeah, um, and it, it has reciprocity, so it works in the United States. So when we go home in the United States, it, it's, it's just basically free roaming. Um, and we, I've also heard, we haven't tested it, but it also works in Colombia and a few other of uh, the South American countries. So um, we both have Tigo, $27 a month is what we pay for, the, uh, for each line on Tigo. For the internet, um, we opted to also go with Tigo, simply because I wanted to try and keep it simple in terms of who we were dealing with. Um, and we were able to find, I think it's the middle plan um, in terms of speed uh, for $32 a month. Um, I have tested the speed and it's uh, five and 12. So um, five megabytes, I believe, down and 12 up. I can't, I, I always get those mixed up, which is which, but um, it's a decent speed. It, it meets all of our needs. We don't have any problems streaming um, yeah. television or we, mm. we do everything pretty much over uh, Fire Stick um, and we haven't had any issues with that. I have so. even watched stuff on my phone, um, maybe something he doesn't want to watch, like Bachelor in Paradise or whatnot. So. It, it works just fine, and it's much better here than uh, when we're temporarily out at the beach, because um, I do know some of my friends at Playa Urito, uh, they can get some lagging or they don't have as, as good of internet, so we've been pleased with the internet so far. Yeah. So I have, uh, I have two main hobbies uh, currently. Uh, one is fishing. Um, I love to fish. I've fished since I was a child uh, with my dad and, and my other family members. Um, and then, you know, as I grew up as an adult, I did quite a bit of fishing on my own. I uh, took my kids fishing. Um, and so coming here, I knew the fishing was going to be great. I'd read all about the Tuna Coast and was super excited. Um, was able to uh, find a kayak uh, to expand and, you know, give a little more options on how to fish the fisheries here. I'm still learning though. Um, it's a new new place, uh, new ways to fish, most definitely. Um, so that's hobby number one. Hobby number two is I really enjoy golf. Um, I wouldn't say I'm good at golf, but I like playing the game. Um, and it's nice that there's a, uh, a golf course that's reasonably priced and decent uh, just right down the road at Chitre. So those are my two main hobbies. I haven't started any new ones yet, but the, you know we've only been here about five months. So give it a little more time. Um, I run. And then I also really enjoy reading, um, puzzles, and board games. So we have been fortunate to find a few races either in Panama City, uh, there's a lot in Boquete, I haven't gone there yet, but the timing worked out in Panama City where we were dropping my parents off, they came for a visit, and we stayed one extra night to do like a Halloween run. And that was my first race here in Panama. And it was really fun, um, very hot. It was like 81 degrees. And luckily they gave us lots of water. So 
Um, I appreciated that, and just the ambiance was amazing and fun. It's different when it's at night. And then not a week later, there was a local race in Petasee. So I felt like that was closer and fun. And both of these races were very inexpensive. Um, so whether you just wanted to walk for exercise or if you do run like me, it was amazing. Um, comparatively, one race was $10 and the other was 15. That's unheard of, you know, like for a race for me in the States, it easy be 50 bucks to 100 um, to enter something comparable. So the $15 race was either a 5K or a 15K, so I decided to get more miles for my money and did the 15K. Um, there weren't very many women that did the 15K, and I wound up winning my age group. <laughs> so, and there was actually a prize of $80. <laughs> So I more than made my money back and um, took him out to ice cream. Got you a nice mani-pedi. Yeah, I did. <laughs> Get myself a manicure as a treat. <laughs> more often, he cooks, but we both equally enjoy it. And now that we're retired, there's time that we both get to. Uh, one thing that I didn't like about living in the States is I had to commute far away and it made it where he wound up having to make most of the meals and I just, I wanted to contribute more, I wanted to do that more, so uh, I really like this now. It's more even or we decide together what we want to make and we might cook together um, or just, you know, take turns. Yeah, I think we both enjoy cooking. Yeah, and I've started to get into baking because like my other hobby, reading, there's this one um, mystery series that she's a cookie baker and so she always has recipes in the book. So I've decided to start doing that and um, I got all the ingredients last night to make these muffins and then these other special cookies. So I'm kind of excited to mix it up and start doing that more often. Um, for basic stuff, yes. There's, there's a couple hardware stores, so if you need something for the house, um, light bulbs, what have you. Recently I had to put some chicken wire around our garbage thing because the dogs were pulling the garbage through the large openings. Um, so there's, there's those little things. There are some clothing stores that you've looked inside yeah. a few of them. There's a few like thrift stores, if you will, um, like cheaper and then like Pathania, which is like a higher end version of cheaper. Um, that's fun. Like I've gotten a few things to wear like when I travel, but unfortunately that was one thing that like I probably came with too much of is clothes. So I did get a pair of Crocs when I was here so that I'd have like a waterproof shoe just to go on the beach and whatnot. And then I found one other um, like strap on sandal that's, I don't care if it gets wet, it may or may not be waterproof, but I just don't care because it was only like 30 bucks for a good pair of sandals. So I wear those on the beach. Um, a lot of times I'll walk on the beach while he's fishing and that's, you know, fun and find a bunch of seashells. But, um, also, the other, like the grocery shopping, you know, that's one thing I liked about Las Tablas is it's a big enough city where there's two main grocery stores, like the Super Extra and the Super Carnes. And then we also have like the corner fruit stand. There's a fruit and mas, and it's like fruits and vegetables. And if you find the broccoli, then you're gonna make the broccoli that night. Um, but then he likes to do papaya and avocado for breakfast and I'll get the bananas and it's super cheap. I've often come home and taken a picture and been like, I got all of this for $3.50 or I got this huge amount for $12, you know, and like it's taking up half the table. So I love, you know, the fresh fruits and vegetables and it's one more thing like we might as well go every other day just for fun, for an outing.
So for the health insurance, uh, we're, we're a little bit on the younger side, so we don't qualify for Medi Medicare or anything like that. Um, but because I'm former U.S. military, um, I have both my VA coverage for my covered disabilities, and then um, uh, since I retired from the military, I'm still eligible for uh, the TRICARE insurance plan. So um, we are able to use those, those plans here in Panama. Um, uh, the only difference is it's the foreign version of those, which means you pay up front and then you submit your claim, whether it's through TRICARE or it's through the VA. Um, but the, uh, the, the services themselves uh, are, are, are very similar to what you would get in the States. Um, what I've been impressed with is the, the veteran service officers that they have in place. They're all over the country. Um, there's at least one in every province, uh, at least the main provinces where there are expats that reside. Um, and uh, they're very helpful. Um, and uh, they have pretty much everything you need for your initial intakes. And then they can make recommendations or referrals to, uh, to other doctors if needed. Um, so that insurance uh, is the same cost as what it was in the States. Um, and for me, it's, it's relatively cheap. It's about $75 a month um, uh, for the TRICARE. And then the other stuff is, is, uh, is, is covered for free. So um, that's where we are with the insurance. Um, and uh, the good thing is that's good for the rest of our lives. So. I think one thing is that we feel pretty safe, like very safe. Uh, we do lock our doors at night, but um, we shut the gate. We don't necessarily lock it unless we're going away for an extended period of time. And so usually we just shut the gate to uh, keep the neighbor dog who I adore, Snoopy, from coming out and visiting us because he likes us too. He's uh, like a basset hound with these big squishy ears. And we just didn't want him wandering around the pool or whatever. Yeah, for the most part, I mean, uh, there hasn't been any situations, whether it was during the tour or since we've moved back here or moved here, um, where I felt unsafe or felt at all unsafe for Sam. I mean, we've uh, everywhere has been as safe, if not safer, than some of the places we've been to in the United States. So, in our experience, you know, being connected through the Panama relocation tours is huge. Um, not only for what we gleaned from an information perspective, um, you know, whether that was through the guide or, or from the tour itself, but just the people that we met along the way. Um, you know, we, uh, the online forums through Facebook and, and everything like that has been spectacular. Um, there's several people that we've met online um, long before we ever met them in person. Yeah. Uh, and then they arrive or, or maybe they were already here and we arrived and we were able to meet them. So. We, we've done a pretty good job of meeting people, I think. Mm -hmm. um, also, you know, what we've noticed, is particularly with Las Tablas, is, you know, when other expats see you out and about, um, they're usually pretty quick to at least introduce themselves or say hi. Um, and that's how we met quite a few folks um, when we first got here, when we were living out at Playa Uberito, was just, you know, people being friendly and introducing themselves. and. Yeah. You know, I think within the first month we were here, we were invited to a wedding reception, <laughs> um, which was huge because there was a lot of people there that we met um, uh, at, at that particular time. So we, I think it's been pretty easy to meet people here in Panama. And we've got definitely met some people that will have long lasting friendships with. So we found uh, Panama relocation tours uh, through you know, a lot of my initial in, uh, research. Um, I looked at actually six different countries um, as potential areas for us to retire early. Um, a few in Asia and then a few here in Latin America. And as Panama just kept coming up as the better choice in a lot of uh, the areas in terms of infrastructure, economy, you know, more of a place that we would be willing to relocate to outside of the United States. Um, I came across Panama Relocation Tours. Um, they had a lot of really good reviews, a lot of content on YouTube. Um, so I watched a lot of the videos. That used to be my, uh, my, my kind of regiment when I would be driving to Saturday work afternoon. or home from work. I would either be listening to one of the previous weekly calls that Jackie does or um, you know, have one of the YouTube videos going on um, in the background while I was driving. 
You know, so just a lot, a lot of information, and a lot of information that's just freely available on the main website. Um, so then, as as I looked at it more, we I looked at the the tours that they had available, and luckily there was one that I was able to get us booked for. Um, In so, March, which was March of 2022, and um, you know, I think we booked it f about four or five months before the tour. So. Um, there was still a lot more content that I was going through that was provided by the Panama relocation tours before our tour. Uh, so by the time we took the tour, we were really just wanted to determine where do we want to start because uh, yeah. we were already convinced Panama was the right place for us. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, our experience with the tour was amazing. Uh, Steve and Ellen were our Absolutely tour guides amazing. and um, the amount of information they provided and, you know, sometimes uh, information is great, but the other thing that was, was, was wonderful with how they delivered it was the context that they gave you around yeah. the information. Like real life experience, like right. we're, we're recommending this because of this and like just reality that helps it be applicable and you know, valid. The other thing is when there were specific questions from the, uh, you know, the group, um, being able to provide examples. Uh, in, in the answers is so much more helpful. Um, and uh, the other thing that we really liked about the Panama relocation tours was the fact that the, the support is enduring. Mm -hmm. You know, once we went on the tour, we came home, we got access, full access to the guide, um, and we got access to the private Facebook group. So as Sam was saying, That's I mean, amazing. we get a lot of advice from other people on you know, using those forums. Um, I've emailed the Panama Relocation Tours at least four or five different times um, just with questions and I get an answer within 24 hours, if yeah. not sooner. Um, the ongoing support and you know, questions, questions and answers, um, the friendships, it's just, it's beyond worth the cost. It's continuing and continuing to be um, just amazing. And the tour itself, I mean, it, if you look fun. at it, it if you look at it fun. from face value, it, it seems expensive. But when you think about what's actually included with, you know, you all get. of your lodging, your transportation, it's a really um, good the vacation. information that's being passed while you're you're on the tour, mm -hmm. um, it's well worth the money. And um, it's it's a really good way if you've never been to Panama before to see most of the country. Yeah, um, absolutely. Because at first, you know, he had brought up David and then Boquete, and um, I, we, we would love to visit Boquete, but it's not personally for us. And even though the tour kind of emphasizes extra days in Boquete, and then you go around, um, that's where I fell in love with Chitre, you know, was on the tour and getting to see the different cities and what has, you know, enough amenities, but in then a small enough town or, you know, like, I probably like the bigger town, but I also want to be economical. So I think we found a perfect balance with this Las Tablas. And, you know, for anybody that's considering moving to Panama, I would highly recommend, um, if, you, if it's within your budget, to do one of the, you know, the full uh, Panama relocation tours. And if not, they have the private tours available as well. Uh, we actually know a couple of the, the private tour guides here in the Zuero Peninsula area. Um, and those can be beneficial as well. But um, definitely, if you're looking for a good overview and um, something that's going to give you the information you need to make that decision as to whether Panama is right for you, and Panama Relocation Tours is going to have what you need to, to be able to educate yourself and provide you with the information you need to make that decision. So the, the tour, one of the things that stood out to me was how well organized uh, the tour was. From the time we arrived at the airport, we did have a little bit of a hiccup with our airport pickup. Um, but for the most part, um, you know, we, we, I think it was a miscommunication actually. Um, but you know, from the time we got to the, to the hotel and checked in, um, you know, we were able to check in early, which was nice and all that stuff was pre-coordinated before we even arrived. Mm -hmm. um, and then as soon as they kind of, uh, Steve and Ellen took control of us that first morning. They are so much fun. <laughs> um, 
I mean, everything was very regimented, but it was also flexible um, because it's Panama and stuff was changing. You know, from the time we left Panama City, started our way west, you know, they're, they have a plan, but that plan is contingent on a lot of other people and, and other things lining up. So, you know, we know of at least a few times where there was audibles and stuff had to change, um, but it was like fluid. Um, they were able to very quickly pivot. Um, but, but for the most part, as someone on the tour, everything felt extremely structured. Um, the safety uh, aspect of it was, was amazing. Um, and you know, going back to the question you asked us about safety, you know, that was the other thing that really stood out to me is when we did the Panama relocation tour, not one time did Steve or Ellen tell us to be careful or you should watch out for this. Um, you know, and we visited a lot of different cities in Panama. So um, the fact that there was never any warnings at any of the places that we stopped. The was only a thing big would be like if the sidewalk there. wasn't, you know, perfect, then you know, watch where you're walking. Right. That right. that's it. You know? But in terms of your Not physical like, safety, yeah. that was another thing that stood out. The people were amazingly friendly. Um, and even just like the airport, um, I did a mission trip in Guatemala and um, just walking off the airport, it's it's a different feel. Um, you're not here, you're not as confronted with um, people begging or asking um, for money. And um, one thing I think is fun is like if they are, they're usually like juggling um, in the street and trying to earn the money, you know, like entertaining. Um, but there's really not as much homeless that we've seen or yeah. really like no issues. Yeah, de definitely the, 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 the tour was amazing and, and how it was structured was exactly what we, uh, it's what I expected, but I was, I was thoroughly impressed with how well it was organized and conducted. Absolutely. I definitely think it, uh, on several uh, fronts it exceeded our expectations. Um, one was like uh, I previously mentioned about the, the organization of it. Um, it was very well conducted. Um, the second was uh, the context around the information from the guide. You know, they give you the handout uh, booklet, which, you know, is really just there as kind of a, a way for you to take notes and to reference. Um, but, you know, all the context and the stories uh, and the first-hand experience that uh, they cover as you're making your trek across the country um, was, was just incredible and uh, definitely exceeded our expectations. And being able to trust what's in the guide and trust, you know, the recommendations or who you might go with. Like, um, we used the car broker um, to find our vehicle and it you know, it was an amazing experience and I think um, it all worked out for the best. And I just extremely appreciate the ongoing support, you know, like where else do you take a trip and then you still get, you know, the support and questions and answers and nowhere, you know, like only this, like that I've ever seen. And um, it's just, it's an amazing resource and it's completely worth it, but just, an extra bonus that you get like friendships, like lifelong friendships out of this and a real sense of community um, while you make this big change, you know. The other thing that I noticed with the guide is just how um, extremely accurate everything that's in the guide is. You know, the fact that it is a living, breathing guide, it's not something that's set and printed, um, allows, you know, Jackie and her team to update it as things change. Um, but it's funny, you read some of the step-by-step um, items in there and it is exactly the way it ends up playing out uh, whether that's doing something with your lawyer or as Sam mentioned you know the car broker everything pretty much was outlined in there in very very minute detail um, so it, it's comforting to know just how accurate the information in the guide is. So I think for somebody who's looking to relocate outside of the United States, um, they should definitely look at Panama as an option. 
Um, it's a wonderful country. It's got a lot of uh, benefits for uh, expats. Um, in terms of advice on the move itself, uh, it would be take a look at what really is important to you um, in terms of the amenities, in terms of infrastructure. Um, you know, for some people, they may or may not be coming from the United States, so you know the, the currency situation, the economy. Um, I would say just do your research, um, and if possible, uh, highly recommend uh, Panama Relocation Tours as a, as a resource mm -hmm. to one uh, educate you on Panama, um, and to uh, uh, if, if you do end up looking at Panama in a serious uh, way to, to move to, then it'll definitely give you the information that you need to thoroughly examine and make that decision. Um, I really like the freedom of paring down and getting rid of a lot of stuff that you don't need or don't use. And he's like, if you haven't touched it in a year, like, do you really need it? So um, I think some of it was like emotionally charged to like, why should I be emotionally attached to certain clothing? But, you know, it was a memory or a trip or whatever. So other than that, um, obviously you come with some clothes. I would come with like one set of sheets and um, a few kitchen items. Uh, like I personally like a rubber scraper or a spatula and just, you know, maybe your favorite whisk or measuring cups, I don't know. Because I'm now having the time to bake or cook. So maybe a few more Pamper Chef items or whatnot. But what you can fit in your suitcase.